guys. Welcome to... Mm, <laughs> what's it called again? Muscle News Weekly, dear. Muscle News Weekly. Okay. Count me again. I'm so not editing that out. <laughs> three, two. Okay, three, two, one. Hi, guys. Welcome to Muscle News Weekly. We are back for another show. Rosie Rascal and... Giles Thomas. <laughs> Okay, Rosie, well, it's been a pretty exciting week in the world of muscle, as I like to start. Um, first of all, how's your week been? Um, well, let me try remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was your birthday. Oh, it was my birthday for four days. Four days, yeah. yeah. because it was landed on an Easter weekend, so I thought we may as well have the whole weekend as my birthday. Mm. So, um, yeah, just chilled, naps, cake. Pizza last night. Pizza last night. So, yeah, all good stuff. All the good. good stuff. Okay, well, let's kick off the week. Uh, obviously, we like to start off with the contests. With the, yesterday was the Indiana Pro, uh, Indie Pro in, funny enough, Indiana. Yes. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's just cut away quickly to a quick clip. I was sent by a guy called Rahul Magu, Mago. Sorry if I've not pronounced that right. <laughs> but um, he sent me the clip yesterday because he was at the show um, supporting, uh, I think it was Luke Sando. So let's just quickly cut to the top five placings at that show. He's a winner of $1,000. He earns $2,000. Fourth place is competitor 18, Ian Valier. That was the, the top five in the Open men's. Um, fifth place, obviously, uh, Rodriguez. I was a bit surprised, surprised by that because Rodriguez got seventh at the Arnold. And for me, he was kind of a favorite coming into the show. Um, he just, he'd obviously just faded. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe thought he was going to come in and think it was a, an easy win, mm. but um, he didn't. He got fifth place. Um, fourth place was a guy I actually spotted, uh, might be on the forums or in uh, the MD forum or on mm. Instagram, a guy called Ian Vellier. Really good physique, really big, hard, Where's shredded. Where's he from? Um, I think he's from America. Okay. Yeah, he's from America. But a newcomer, I kind of, you know, you, you kind of see him flashing up on your newsfeed on Instagram and he kind of just pops up and I thought, yeah, I like him. Mm. Um, yeah, so he, t I mean, it wasn't a small show because this, this was kind of, this is kind of a new show. And I think, because um, obviously all the big names had done the Arnold a few weeks previously. Um, what the first time I heard it mentioned, it was when Luke Sando, um, who took third place, mentioned it on, on a podcast I was on a few weeks ago called The Size Game. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, it was a lot of new faces, but that's the thing I like about these new shows. You get all the new faces. Mm -hmm. It gives a chance for, um, to see the new guys coming through. Uh, I know you had Steve Cooklow, the winner in first, but I mean, pretty much all the other guys were pretty much all newcomers. Yeah. So, um, how old is Luke Sando now? He's 29. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's still nine. Yeah. Nine, 29. Coming still, up fast. Yeah. Young. Yeah. So uh, fourth place we had Ian. Third place we had uh, our good friend Luke Sando, who's also starting a column um, called The Size Game in Muscular Development Magazine. That started. We, I think I said, guys, just leave him at the uh, the office. I said, look, just leave him until he's um, till he's done his show because he's uh, you know what it's like, isn't it? When a yeah. The the quality of the writing might not be quite. <laughs> he's like I lift weights. Done. <laughs> yeah. So he took third. Yeah. So look, really good. Because, um, like, in his amateur competitions and mm. then maybe the first couple with 
pros, it was always like his condition that he knew that he, he had to try and push mm. to get a bit harder. And he, from the little bit that I saw, it looked like he was full, mm. like he always needs to be, mm -hmm. but also seems to be getting the condition sharper. Yeah. So this is a good sign. See, Luke has come up so fast. He first, I first saw him in 2012 as a junior. So, uh, and, and every single year I've seen him at the British finals, He's just improved massively every single year. He has struggled with condition. Last year, he got the invite to the Arnold Classic in Columbus and took eighth place. That's actually not too bad, is it, really? Yeah, no. um, yeah so he took eighth place. And then he, he, uh, he actually tore his hamstring, um, but he committed to do the Vancouver Pro. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you, should, you, you could say he should have pulled out maybe, but... The end of the day, you know, he committed to the show, and uh, like his partner at the time, she was, she was, yeah. You know, was she competing too? Ro um, yeah, from Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> Carly. Wrong, wrong girl. <laughs> yeah, Rosie. No, um, yeah, Carly Thornton. Yeah, she's uh, she she did pretty well in the in the women's physique in the pro there. So yeah, and then he obviously t he, he tried to get the invite for the Arnold Classic again this year, but didn't get it unfortunately. Right. So went and did the Arnold Australia yes. and took sixth place there. Now, he's just done um, third place here, and he beat good guys like Hidetada, you know, Hidetada Yamagishi, who was seventh place, um, Rodriguez. And is he um, working with Asita? Chris Asita, yeah. Asita. Chris Asita. They seem to be getting it right together, don't they? Yeah, but I mean, th he, at 29, he's built that physique very quite, quite fast. Yeah. And he, he does his proportions, his symmetry, everything really nice. Amazing thickness, you know, his, his condition was good, his, his glutes and his hamstrings, which seems to be an area that the judges do look for yeah. to be in condition, yeah. were condition. But for me, he just needs, he needs more detail. Yeah, and I think um, Luke and, and like a lot of the British guys we have, but if you look at someone like Luke, you can see his physique has been built with hard work. Mm. And He's with, strong. He's with really strong. serious hard graft in the gym. Because he still looks young, mm. he looks he, he looks young and he looks healthy, mm -hmm. and he, this physique has been built from pure grass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he looked tremendous, and he's such a he's such a rising star. Um, I mean, the future just looks great for him, and he's a he's a good guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's a good guy, Luke. Yeah, you know? cool. So, um, and like I said, he's seriously, seriously strong. I mean, he's he's ridiculously powerful. That guy. Yeah. I think was he saying? I might be wrong, but maybe he was saying that actually now at the point where he's with his training, in some ways he's training. He holds back now because he's built. So yeah. much of a, a good foundation with mm -hmm. heavy. Like he doesn't necessarily have to continue with progressive overload, I think. Well, like he's a big proponent of deadlifts because you look at his traps and his back development, very thick. And you can see it's that kind of, it looks like a deadlift back. Yeah. You know, the one, the areas that they're, yeah. they're the thick lumbar. Um, and I said this early, early, earlier to today, um, you know, when you can deadlift six, seven, whatever, more plates, you know, Dorian Yates... You don't really need to keep trying no, to go no. heavier, do you? But Dorian Yates, I, I remember filming mm. um, Dorian Yates' training partner, Leroy Davis, mm. and he was saying that when he was training with Dorian, they never went over four plates, 400 pounds, on deadlift. Now, that the reason being... He would do deadlifts at the end, yeah. and he said it would all the the, the like you deadlifted today, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, today I tried that. I put deadlifts at the end, and it felt really good because I haven't done deadlifts for about a year. Mm -hmm. So I think better to go lighter and slightly higher reps to start with, and at the end, and it was I felt amazing. And then start adding poundages. Yeah, and then start trying to get a little bit heavier. Mm. Lee Powell, uh, to, uh, British two twelve pro, uh, said a few years ago. Because um, he used to take time off, like a Kevin Rowland stop training, yeah. and, you know, and, he, and he'd, he'd, he'd kind of come back and, and he said, "I would start from scratch." Yeah. He says on deadlift, squat, bench press. He says, "And I would go right back to like just one plate a size." You have to. You have to. This is a mistake. The body mechanics. Yeah, this is a mistake I've made in the past, where um, because I have, to, I do the whole, mm. or I have done in the past, where I've taken a like long time off training and off diet food and everything, and then you're building your body back from scratch but you've got that temptation to lift heavy because you're desperate mm. to get back up to where you because your mind's now set on like where you used to be mm -hmm. you want to get there quick but the when I've made that mistake it's given me postural problems right. it's thickened my waist slightly yeah. because actually your body's just not ready you need to 
Like, if you can only lift the two kgs, I'm sorry, you've got to suck it up for a little bit and just build up slowly. Your training partner, Willie, was saying uh, when you when you started back for your last show, the Two Bros Pro, um, you were coming back and, and telling me, laughing about how you know how little weight you were using. But yeah. then look where you ended up. You yeah, know? and um, it definitely improved uh, certain body parts that I've always had problems with, like my pecs and my biceps. And my shoulders grew massively this year, um, and it allowed my waist to stay small because I was just smart and built it slowly. Mm. Yes. Okay, so anyway, yeah, back to Luke. Um, yeah, so he's starting his column in MD. That's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and second place at the show was a guy called Char Charles Griffin. Griffin, not Griffin. Mm -hmm. um, this, I spotted this guy on, on Facebook. He's on my Facebook. This was a couple of weeks ago. And I couldn't believe how much size <coughs> he put on. And I was really pleased he got second because he does have... He does have an unusual shape, but it's not a bad shape. Why unusual? It's just it's just a very unusually shaped physique. <laughs> right? I, I can't, like a vase. He's got a, he's got an unusual structure, <laughs> but once you actually kind of get used to it and you actually realise he's actually got some incredible body parts, like his <laughs> arms, his arms. I'm telling you, they're up there with Roly or Phil Heath. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Like the frontal bicep, there's just there's just so much going on. I mean, he's a really exciting prospect, that guy. Um, so yeah, so I was really pleased for Charles getting second. He said he, I, I was looking on his Facebook today and he said he was pretty upset that he didn't, look, that he didn't win it. Oh really? Yeah, he was going for the win. I mean, okay. he really was. He wasn't going there to make up the numbers because he has, he competed last year and he's had some good placings like top three, top six, yeah. at nearly all the pro shows he's done. So um, yeah, yeah, good, good, good physique. And in first place was Steve Cooklow. Mm. Now Steve Cooklow, um, I was really pleased for because a couple of years, this guy was kind of touted as uh, maybe seven, eight years ago as like the next Jay Cutler, you know, good looking guy, marketable, nice proportionate kind of physique, small waist, you know, he's fairly tall. I think he's still only in maybe late 20s, early 30s. Um, you know, like you said, like a fresh face, healthy look yeah. like Luke, you know, yeah. where they kind of look like they're not um, killing themselves. Yeah. Um, and then a, then a couple of years, and then he, but he was going to the Olympias and he wasn't really even cracking top 10. So uh, he kind of fell by the wayside a little bit, <clears throat> pardon me. And um, and then he he was on you know you know we have Dragon's Den yeah in America they have a program called Shark Tank yeah and him and his girlfriend went on and they were doing this uh, the clothing wear and he'd really downsized for it mm -hmm. so I thought oh he stopped competing he's obviously just saying okay well I, you know I've tried I'm gonna call it a day mm -hmm. and then when you did the Olympia in 2016 2016. Um, I saw him at the expo and he was he was you know a big, he's a popular guy mm -hmm. and uh, he downsized a bit and I said oh that's him done he's not going to compete again so for him to come back this year I was really excited to see him come back and he always he liked like Luke he kind of lacked detail but he came back this year and he looked sensational I was at the Arnold Classic as you know mm -hmm. And he took fifth place. He beat uh, Bayeki, uh, Rodriguez, Hidetada, you know, a lot of big names. I mean, he made top six and he, he looked, he could have been, he, I don't know, he maybe could have been, probably couldn't have beat Roly, but he was, for the first time, he uh, had proper detail and real separation. And it, yeah. it, it kind of enhanced those kind of big, really well proportioned, you know, thick massive physiques it really I, I hate seeing them without detail you yeah. know because it's 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 a lack of conditioning it's a lack of maturity but he's come back and he's got it now so I'm thrilled for him and funny enough I interviewed um Steve at 2011 Arnold at the expo I was literally going around by myself mm -hmm. with my tripod and, my, and I was literally just grabbing all the interviews Stan Efferding, Dave Henry, um Hanny Rambard and then I, I interviewed Steve and it's funny because I bumped into him a few years ago at an expo and he said, he actually said it on the MD forum as well, he says that's actually one of the, the fate, well, one of his favorite interviews that he'd ever done because we, I, I veered it away uh, for a good 50% of it away from bodybuilding because at the yeah. time he was a paramedic. Yeah. He was a paramedic and he was, um, I said, so how do you, when you're on a shift, I said, how do you, um, how do you get your food in? And he says, he says, do you know what? He says, I used to get really stressed about it. He said, but then I realized if I don't eat for five hours, I'm not actually going to lose any muscle. Yeah. He said, I'm going to be hungry. He said, but um, the, whole, the whole job, he said, was actually a good distraction when he was dieting. Yeah. You know? Um, and he said, actually, he said, it's good cardio when you've got to get into a, you know, you, you know getting an axe into a door or something. Yeah. He, said, uh, he said, yeah, he said it was, um, it was a good job, you know? So, uh, yeah, it was just nice because he got to talk about other things in his life other than just, you know, tell us about your prep for your next show or whatever like that. So. Yeah. That's what I always like to hear personally. When I see bodybuilders that I like, I always want to know more about mm. them outside of the sport because then it's like more that you can relate to and, mm -hmm. 
uh, feel like you know them. Uh, yeah, it's like I said in the last episode um, of this show, I said when I spent my, uh, I did a UK tour with Lee Priest back in 2006, and mm. I remember getting to the last day of after we've been touring all around the country, stayed in my house, and we were just talking nonstop, doing a lot of driving. And I said, you know what, Leah? says, one thing I've, I've, I've just realized, we've hardly talked about bodybuilding. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about family and relationships and all sorts, films, um, uh, other interests, you know, driving and stuff like that. So it's nice. I think the pros do actually appreciate it yeah. to be asked about something other. It's like when I see Branch Warren, the first thing I would say, I say, how's your wife and, and little Faith Lee, little girl? And he kind of gets all excited. He, you know, he'll talk for ages about it because it's his family. So, um, yeah, so yeah, fantastic show. Charles Dixon won the 212s, uh, which wasn't a surprise because he only lost to Kamal by one point. Uh, Charles the Tank Dixon, he only lost by one point. He, uh, he got 23 points, and Kamal El Gargany at the Arnold Classic in the 212 got 22 points. So he, mm. he, he lost it by a whisker, and he was peaked perfectly at the Arnold Classic. This is a guy that has really been sort of. I think sometimes getting harsher placings because of his structure, maybe. Right. But he's just managed to just, he's just keep, he brought an amazing package this year. I was so impressed with Charles. Cool. Uh, really excited for him. So, um, yes, um, and let's talk about the Fiji Pro. This was in Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> now, this wasn't exactly the same top three as the New Zealand. You had Jafar Aziz, who won the New Zealand Pro the week before, and obviously you had uh, Sami Al Haddad in second from Bahrain, and then you had Samir Trudy from, he lives in Dubai now, uh, originally from Sweden. Uh, he took third place. So um, I don't know how this works in terms of the point system, um, because I would really like to see Samir and Sami at the Olympia. Mm. I think they're really, um, I think, uh, especially Samir is another guy, another young guy that you know has all the size and maybe just needs a bit more detail and maturity mm -hmm. separation. So, um, and Sammy, well, I'm a big Sammy fan. He's, yeah. like you said, he's, you know, he's a beautiful physique, you know, lovely aesthetics. So let's just hope they both get their opportunity to get to the Olympia yeah. because there's, um, it's a shame when you sometimes get these guys who do win a show and then there's another show the week later, they think, oh, it's more prize money. It's, uh, and then they go and do it. And then the people of second and third who keep trying to come back yes. don't get to qualify. It's like, it's, it's tough because now it is only winner only, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So... Yes, um, and we're going to talk about our favourite now. Cedric! Cedric! Cedric McMillan. Now, let's cut away to... You know what I'm going to show, don't you? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to cut away to something that happened yesterday in, in our home uh, city. City? Near, yeah. Nearby city, Leeds. Leeds. Yeah, so uh, check this out. So what do you think about them? Well, I think... What were you doing? Explain. So, basically, <laughs> Cedric's on his UK tour, and they have visited so many places, haven't they, while he's been over. Loads yeah. of stores, loads of gyms. Um, and you can just tell Cedric absolutely loves meeting all the people, mm. even though it's such a busy schedule um, and very tiring that kind of works quite tiring even though you just kind of stood around chatting and stuff it is very tiring and you're going from one end of the country to the other so we were kind of trying to catch up with him mm. to talk about doing some posing together and some practicing well we tried to go thursday on your birthday didn't we yeah but the easter traffic was we set off and after 45 <laughs> minutes we were like abort abort i kind of looked at rosie and she was looking at me and i knew exactly what she was thinking and i said should we abort i said so and rosie went yeah let's abort i said let's yes. go we went home and had a two hour sleep didn't we yeah because it would have been like a maybe a five hour drive or more oh, with, that with, tra traffic. With, with that traffic it would have been at least that yeah much. so we just thought okay this is not going to work so 
we didn't get a chance, me and Cedric didn't get a chance to get in a studio, <laughs> but in the middle of the supplement shop. Yeah. As you can see on that clip, uh, which I've just shown. We started uh, playing and uh, trying, trying out different ways of taking each other's body weight and so <laughs> on. And it was, it was pretty funny, but Cedric on all the, on the pictures and the videos looks absolutely terrified. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. I'm climbing go, over him like a little kid. Go back and watch it. Cause it is, um, but you said as a kid, you used to like climbing on people, didn't you? Yeah. When I was a kid, <laughs> I used to climb on people and I used to, I would like choose one man usually <laughs> in the room and then just not leave them alone I'd be like on their shoulders and all sorts so sounds yeah. like our first date dear yeah <laughs> so I've not changed much <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah but when you went out the back I was like he says Rosie come back I was like what is going on here yeah I was <laughs> just trying out little different po um different ways of uh, kind of using each other's body weight to uh, do lifts and stuff so um yeah but obviously it's the first time we ever tried anything so it was a uh, you know just uh, the other thing as well is because of the height difference and the size oh. difference we're going to have to change some of the lifts that the way that you would normally do it and where you would hold right. for it to work so, and you probably won't be lifting him yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do the dirty dance one? Or? With him. <laughs> I can just see him maybe getting blinded by the stage lights and then just you just flying over him. So. Yeah, but I think it's going to... Um, at some point, we're going to uh, have some proper time in a studio and I know it's going to be mm. so much fun and it's going to be very easy to work with Cedric because he's just kind of one of those people that just gives stuff a go and just gets into it. We went out for a Nando's afterwards with him, a uh, Portuguese chicken place all over, all over the UK, uh, Ronnie Coleman's favourite. And um, he was just kind of sat there eating and he went, I've got it, I've got it, you do this and then you do the splits and then I'll do this. <laughs> and it just kind of came to you. You could see it was ticking over in his brain, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But, um, but do you know what I like, I like about Cedric? Uh -huh. I like the fact he's the same with everyone. Yeah. Like he, we walked in and he obviously saw us but he kind of, he gave the time to the people that were there to see him first. And we kind of just stood back and were... <laughs> and what with us being VIP? <laughs> yeah, superstars. Yeah, no, no, but it was, I, I like, I like, I spot things like that. I like things yeah. like that. You, you can see that every single person that came in that, in that store to, to speak to him, yeah. really, he really engaged. It's like at the, um, the Arnold Classic. I, we, we didn't manage to get an interview with Cedric. And at the end of the, because we'd done all right. Because you were scared of him. Did he have his angry face? Oh, on? we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that. And um, literally, I think I went, I did a whole circuit around the whole place at the meet and greet where I interviewed Dennis Wolf. Yeah. Um, you know, we did Roly, Dexter, all of them. Uh, De um, I said Dennis Wolf, yeah. Kamal, all those. Uh, Jose, such a name dropper. <laughs> and, uh, and I went round and he was still, I came back round again and he was still talking to the same fan, yeah. the same person. Yeah. And he's really engaged. And I, I just like that. I just think it's, um, you know, because like you said like in the last episode, you know, it, it really makes um, a difference to how, because they, they do have a big impact. Well, I tell you the story. When I first met, I won't say oh, the yeah. name because he's still about, <laughs> but uh, I had a favourite bodybuilder. And I used to, I thought he was so amazing. And he had the, whenever he competed and on all the pictures in the magazines, he would always have this really big smile. So I had this in, image in my head that this guy was like really kind and warm. And then I met him at the, um, one of the stands at the Arnold. And the, the thing is, I'd just previously been speaking to Flex Lewis, mm. who spent about 15, 20 minutes chatting yeah. to me, and he remembered me off Facebook. That's Flex, yeah. And he chatted me, to me for ages and ages and ages. And then I bobbed over, I queued up to wait for my favorite bodybuilder, and he was the biggest cock <laughs> ever. He was so rude, he was so uh, arrogant, he had no time. He was like, I'm not here for this. I've actually interviewed that guy. Yeah, I've interviewed him. Yeah, he's uh, he's a bit of an idiot, really. Yeah, the thing really. is, it, but in in the way that say Cedric or Flex Lewis or people like that will make a good impression, you, know, you do get the odd one. Unfortunately, the yeah. and it, I don't know. It's a shame, really, because but I was like just young and I felt I was really sad that he spoke to me yeah, in that nice. way. It's horrible. Anyway, but anyway, back to Cedric. 
<laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. Um, what about the? Uh, well, we were having the Nando's downstairs having food. Um, remember the child portions came. Yeah, they brought us all like they brought us about fifteen portions of chicken, but all child all, portions, all sliced up. It was all sliced up with a little cocktail sticker <laughs> and a flag in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it is. Cedric, because it was like we all had, uh, I think they brought three plates each mm. or whatever. And Cedric just got all the chicken and poured loads on his plate. And he had a mound like that. And then everyone else had like little bits of chicken. And then I think he realized that he'd taken all the chicken and he was like, oh, you have some of this. I want yeah, he, he said to me, he said, take some. I took one piece of No, take some more, take some more. I think he felt guilty. <laughs> but we, how did we get onto the subject of how he's, because I, 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 I somehow got onto the subject of when he was backstage at San Marino uh, in Italy last November, which we were at covering for MD. And I said, uh, I said to be honest, uh, to be honest, Cedric. I said you're a bit intense on show day, mate. <laughs> yes. I said you've got that face. You've got, uh, uh, you've got that face. I said, and to be honest, I actually started walking backwards when I saw yeah, you. I said, said you always go around with your headphones on, and you've got this scowl on your face. He, and what did he say? He said, Oh no, no, not on show day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> he said he looks intense, but he said that he has like a frown. Like a natural frown, and all of his kids have got it as well. He yeah, he said all his kids have got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, 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 he refers to it as he's got it back from his military days. Yeah. He said because he, when he was an instructor in the military, um, he says you have to have what's called a command presence. Yeah. And you have to have. But then, what did he say about the? Well, the, the, I think the guy that was maybe training him at the start had said that he needed to tone down his command presence, yeah. it was too strong, because, um, <laughs> and then Cedric was like, yeah, but I've seen so-and-so's like, uh, shouting or whatever, and he was like, yeah, but he's not as big as <laughs> <laughs> He's not 6'2 and 300 pounds. So yeah, Cedric's like physical presence mm. was already enough to have command presence, mm. so everything else had to be toned down a little bit. Yeah. So he said he had to, he found that he had to soften his approach a little bit so he didn't scare. <laughs> what about the face he pulled? And he said, I had to, I had to, it, the, the face he pulled, and I, it, 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 it wasn't kind of like smiley, it was a kind yeah. of, he okay. said he would have to give them uh, the commands, but try and smile. Yeah. So he was like, get down and give me 20. <laughs> I said, Cedric, that's just creepy. That's just a creepy face, mate. And then <laughs> he's like, yeah, oh, well, you can't win. You know, yeah. I'll just be me. But I remember the first time I ever saw him at the Olympia. Why don't we cut to that footage now? I've got the footage okay, of yeah. you at the Olympia on the, uh, well, let's, 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 next let's, to Cedric. let's just play it. And then I'll exp uh, Rosie will explain what it's about. Yeah. Check this out. Show to qualify for the Olympia, uh, and then you got to stand next to Julianne, which is always yeah. nice. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't think this time last year I was amateur. And then to be at the Olympia. Yeah, so this, this was at the Olympia Superstar uh, meet and... twenty it was Superstar Summer on the Sunday, 2016. Yes. You won the Rookie of the Year award. Yes, so I was invited down by Robin Chang, wasn't I? Because we weren't at the gala dinner, were we? Uh, yeah, because I didn't get my um, my award at the Rookie of the Year award because I, I'd left early. We went to bed, we were tired. No, I was too full of all the food or something. <laughs> felt ill, I was hallucinating. Um, <laughs> but then, um, yeah, Cedric, I saw Cedric at the front and he was chatting to Bob Chick, I think. And I was like, man, that guy's intense. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I was like, he looks so intense. And I thought that he looked like he was a bit, um, like I didn't think he looked approachable at all. Mm. And I thought he looked like, Maybe he would be one of those bodybuilders that was like a bit of a cock. <laughs> and then, and then when she we, told him this yesterday as well. Yeah. She told him all this, and he was like, "Oh, yeah." And then we got on the table, and we're all uh, getting interviewed, and Bob was asking questions, and I was sat next to Cedric, and I just uh, when Cedric started talking, I was like, "Oh my god, I love him. He's so, oh. such a nice, uh, genuine guy." And, such passion for bodybuilding and yeah it was just it's just funny how you the the way someone can look yeah. and then who they really are but but they kind of forget sometimes how they appear yeah you know maybe he's in his mind he's just kind of the way you know but i suppose it's hard to sometimes walk around with a big smile on your face all the time and be you know yeah, especially when you're competing yeah exactly so um so yeah so cedric 
Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so have we got anything else to say about Sedro? How wonderful he is, how amazing he is. <laughs> we love him. No, no so he's a, he's a good guy, he's a good representative. And it's funny, um, I was talking about, um, I said, oh, I think the conditioning was better at the, 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 the Arnold just gone. Um, then it was at San Marino, and he went, oh, really? And I says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I was there, front row at both and shows. San Marino was good. Yeah, I said, but um, I said, the Shut thing up. is now, Cedric, I said, your, your problem areas used to be your hamstrings, your glutes, you know, that kind of area, the lower back. You used to kind of hold, you know, that's where they would kind of mark you down because you weren't absolutely shredded. From San Marino last year, he's actually got that right now. Yeah. But the funny thing is now, it seems to be around his abs. He always has like these washed out kind of mm. like bloaty abs now. And he said, yeah, he said, do you know what it is, Jars? He says, what it is? He says, I um, to kind of keep my waist small. He says, I never train abs. Right. He said, so now I have to, my abs are just very shallow. He said, so unless I'm absolutely, he said, they always look soft unless I'm absolutely okay. on my best condition. Okay. So he said, I'm actually going to start training them now. He mm. said, because I want to, and I'm going to put a bit more size on for the Olympia. Because, um, you know, I'd love to see Cedric in top three. I said, for, for me, he is like, I think, I think him and Sean Roden had, have, had, have the potential to be Mr. Olympia. Mm. I genuinely believe that. Mm. I think Roden maybe started to slip a little bit now, but, you know, a good full year of prep, maybe they've had injuries, or, you know, yeah. maybe if they kind of overcome certain things, maybe they can, you know. So, I mean, it's hard not to root for someone like Cedric, mm. you know. So, and he did say, uh, I, said, so what? I said, I was surprised he didn't do Arnold Australia. And he says, no, he says, I'm going to do the Toronto in June. And I said, yeah, but you had a busy year last year. And he said, no, he says, not about this taking off, this type taking off time. He says, I like to keep competing. He says, I seem to, you know, because someone that big, it's hard for them to get really out of shape because yeah. they have to eat so much food being that big, you know, tall, wide, you know, they kind of just go smaller in the off season. You know, they kind of grow into a show. Yeah. I mean, how, 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 also, I can't imagine like, I can't imagine Cedric goes that far mm. away from his stage look. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like, um, it probably doesn't take a crazy amount of time to prep for a show. Yeah. Or it would be easy to back off, come forward within mm. the space of six, 12 weeks each time. Yeah. But he's going to continue prepping himself as well. Yeah. Because um, when he did the San Marino, he went back to his old journals when he was an amateur. <laughs> and um, that obviously worked for him. You know, yeah. he won San Marino, he beat um, Hadi, Brandon Curry. Also, sometimes... Um, for some people, maybe just not having a coach is actually less stressful. Possibly. Because this, the waiting to see what they say mm. and the wondering how it's going to work, whereas maybe sometimes it's easier to go back to something you did and you know it works and just do it without mm. asking any questions. Possibly. Possibly. It's, it's different for everyone. Yeah. It? And different each prep as well. So. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, that's enough talking about Cedric. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so obviously you're looking forward to doing your guest posing. Yeah, it'll because be super duper. And I'm off the way dancing again in Germany in a couple of weeks as well. So yeah. Check out episode eight of the Tiger and Rascal show. There's a lot of uh, footage from Rosie's last trip to Germany where um, there's a, a dance... Uh, con Contem contemporary, contemporary dance. dance. I am a tree. <laughs> contemporary dance, uh, which, which actually won a big national award, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So check that out. Episode eight of the Tiger Rascal Show. Um, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, let's talk about. Let's move on to Kamal El Gagne. Now, no one saw this guy coming. Uh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I've known Kamal. Now, Kamal El Gagne. Um, he's originally from Libya. He now lives in the UK. He goes back and forth. He was representing Qatar for the national team for for many years on their am international amateur IFBB team, which he just won ridiculous amounts of titles um, and did very well for himself. Now, Kamal actually got his pro card granted this year by Jim Mannion, and he decided to do the Arnold Classic as his first pro show mm -hmm. at 46 years old. Now, if you check out the run line, uh, rather than me go over through, you know, through great detail, I said, you can check out run line, uh, I don't know the next episode, but it's the, it's the one that uh, Ron Harris did with Kamal. I think it was last week. I watched mm -hmm. it on, I think I watched it Tuesday. It was over an hour long, mm -hmm. and it goes right through his history. So for the sake of me going through it all again. Cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was funny because at the Arnold Classic, um, we were at the uh, Meet the Olympians, and 
and I said, oh, I want to grab this guy for an interview. And they went, is he, is he, even, is he a pro? And I said, no, he's a pro. I said, he's, he's, I said, if he turns up looking his best, I said, he's a definite threat. And they were just looking at me like, okay, okay, we'll go and grab him for an interview. So I interviewed him. Um, and he's been working with Chris Aceto as well. Okay. And uh, obviously he won it at 46 years old, his first pro show. You know, and this is a guy that's been competing since the 90s. Um, and he's probably, I can't think of an amateur bodybuilder in the world that has won, in the IFBB, that has probably won more titles, more championships than anyone. This guy, I mean, at 46, I mean, I, I, for me, his physique's actually regressed a little bit. Mm. It, but his conditioning was better. Uh, and he obviously won, he beat like Jose Raymond, he beat Dave Henry, he beat um, Samir Trudy. Uh, Charles Dixon, and it's the Arnold Classic, his first pro show. So uh, let's cut to a clip here because I want to. I actually in, well, I didn't have an interview, but I did a bit of filming uh, the day after the Arnold Classic, where uh, we spoke for about eight minutes. The full interview I think will be shown in excerpts in episode ten of the Tiger and Rascal show. Uh, and it's funny because we talk about how his career is kind of starting all over again at forty six. Check this out. Your career is you've, you've, you've having like a second career now. Aren't you? Oh, it's all started. <laughs> you, last three or four years, you're like, okay, that's it, that's me done. I'll maybe do one more show. And now you're like, oh, shit, start work for again. Yeah. What the Arnold Classic? Yeah, I mean, that's what I my brother with the um, TV. Oh, nice, the t local TV. <laughs> local TV, outside for the fireworks. Oh, fireworks? Yeah, oh, you mean? He's a big deal in Libya. He's a big deal, He's a big deal in Northampton now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> listen, listen to that, our tradition. In just Johannes. show, just show, yeah. It's a celebration for Kamal. Celebration, yes. Back in Libya. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so good. National hero. <laughs> yeah. hey, we're gonna. Um, I think me and Rosie will come down. We'll do some filming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah some yeah, training yeah. and stuff. And do for the for Tiger Rascal show. And we'll do some stuff for MD as well. A camel. There's a camel on a truck. Awesome. <laughs> oh no! No! <laughs> They're gonna eat the camel, are they? They are gonna eat the camel. They eat shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Yeah, so yeah, come on. Um, bloody impressive. So yeah. he's basically, his career started all over again. Really exciting. Yeah, and he's only down, he's probably only three hours away from us. So yeah. I think. I'm going to go and do some training with him. He's strong. He's very strong. I've trained with him. I've trained with him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ratio. <laughs> Doodle pip. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, well, I was going to say about Kamal. Yeah. So yeah, obviously, how do you think he could do it in Olympia? I don't know. I think, um, like, if you say that his body has gone back a little bit, but now with mm. this new kind of energy and motivation that actually, because for all those years to be kind of trying to reach for the, the pro card, and mm. then when he finally does this big show and wins it, mm. now it's like almost reinforcing that self-belief mm -hmm. that he's obviously had for all this time but i bet there was some little doubts you know yeah. a, a lot of stress and now it's like he can just really be like yeah. no i do deserve this and i am good enough but he was starting his prep like you did for your two bros pro way he was almost starting from scratch again yeah so uh, it, but he said he takes like six months to prep for a show Yes. But he was starting from scratch, and he said he didn't know at that age whether his body would actually respond how he wanted it so to. So he probably just needs more time, like, mm. and, and now he has a bit more, so yeah. let's see. But he's also got a very, he's got some very strong poses, and he's got very strong aesthetics. Now, I remember uh, Kamar, we went over to Greece back in 2002 in a world championship, he won it. And he was like, he was probably around about 80 kilo, maybe even less. And he was winning overalls in height, this was a height class, this was NABA. And he won the, the Nava Britain, uh, won his class at Nava Universe. Then he went to the Nava Worlds in Thessaloniki in 2002. I went with him. And he won the overall. And they, you know, some of those big class one guys, they are giants. Mm -hmm. They're like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, They're big, big guys. And he absolutely destroyed all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a guy that, uh, and he competes now. And he's still got a few pounds before he reaches the 212 limit. So he could put probably a couple of pounds of muscle back on because he did look, um, I thought he looked a bit over dieted. Okay. So he lost a bit of fullness. So like in his side chest, his side chest is usually a very sort of powerful pose. And when he did it, I was like, his arms looked at his chest. There was the areas that he definitely. Well, this is the problem when you do start from scratch, mm. that when you diet, the, it, if you don't make, retain the muscle year after year, 
and you do it the way I do it, mm -hmm. it's easier when you're on prep to lose muscle when you're dieting down because mm -hmm. you've only just kind of put it back on again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, this is the problem with that kind of thing. So, but I think he's definitely a threat for top five at Olympia. Um, definitely a top five. I mean, top three? Top three, 46? Thing is, imagine starting your career at 46. You know, you've got like Dexter at 48. You've got... Um, <laughs> Must be you know, nice these guys for his these family things. as well because mm. it's like <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? When you you mm. kind of putting everything into this dream, it's like I know that I think my family before I got my pro card were, were quite like, "What is she doing? What is she doing? Yeah, what? yeah. because they don't know the sport. Mm. So every year when I would tell them, "Look, I'm getting that pro card." Yeah they probably just think, man, you're deluded. <laughs> so I don't know if it's, this is the same, but it's probably really nice for his family to be like, so mm. proud that, oh my God, he's got it. Yeah, he's got four kids. Four, and plus, I interviewed him back in 2014, and he said he was going to do one more pro show, and he wanted to do his last show on the Olympia stage. Mm. So what if he, go, conceivably, what if he goes and gets top three at the Olympia? What if and he gets second? Retired. And then says, that's it, I'm retiring. But I, I just, he, you know, it's like, it's a big, it's, it's quite exciting really because you've got yeah. guys like him, you've got Derek Lunsford, uh, who I really rate. Um, you know, these new guys coming through, you've got uh, somebody else I'm going to talk about in a minute. Uh, you know, guys like Ash Kanani, they're all going for Flex Lewis's title, oh, you know. It's so getting it's, it's, exciting. It's, yeah. It's a good thing. Good. I, also, I'd like to discuss something in next episode, but I want to talk about briefly about how I think they need to up the prize money in the 212. Yeah. You know, when, when Phil Heath is getting 400,000... the women's physique division. <laughs> <laughs> when, they're getting 400, when Phil Heath is getting 400,000 for first place at the Olympia and Flex Lewis in the 212 is getting 40,000, I think there's a bit of a disparity there. Yeah. I, th I think they need to balance it out a little bit. You it's know. time, isn't it? I'd like, to see, I'd like to see whoever wins the 212 Olympia, I think really at least 100. If, if, the, if the Open winners get 400, I think it's a bit of a... Then, then they can quit the uh, stripping job at night. <laughs> Paint stripping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, moving on. Let's talk about JP. Yes. Jordan Peters. Peters. I always say Pearson because we've got another bodybuilding friend called Jordan Peters. Mm. Be Pearson, Pearson from years ago. Uh, yeah, Jordan P Peters, one of our UK beasts. Oh, he's a monster. Him and his, he's a um, monster, isn't he? Yeah, him and his uh, girlfriend, Corinne. Corinne Ingman. Yeah, she also does uh, like powerlifting. Is it powerlifting or strong woman? She does everything. Everything. She's, she's awesome. So they're kind of hot hot news right now in the, the UK. Um, Jordan preps a lot of people mm. in the UK and all over as well. But how, I mean, he's prepped people like James Hollinshead, who won the British finals last year, our newest British pro. He helps Luke Sandow with the training. Yeah. Sasan. Um, Sasan. Hirati. Training. Yeah, they're doing a really cool, good job and um, giving a lot of motivation and a lot of free content as well mm. um, on the Instagram and so on. But... Um, yeah, he's going to be doing a column, isn't he, for muscular development? Along with you and Luke Sando as yeah. part of the, the British trio. So that's really exciting. I think yeah. it's... Um, I, 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 I see with Jordan Peters, he's very... He gets results, isn't he? Yeah, he gets results and he's very open and honest. Mm. Um, and um, in a very uh, in-depth way... Uh, I th I'm not quite sure what his study is, if it's biochemistry or something mm. along that line. Funny enough, I, I actually did a video with Jordan and his training partner, Dr. Josh Hill, uh, yeah. a powerlifter. Um, I think he did bodybuilding as well. And it's funny because they never used the video on MD. Mm. And it was because Jordan was just like this monster. At the, this was back in 2011 because he was, he was only about 23, 24. Because <laughs> he was a junior in 2009, Jordan. Jordan's not even 30 years old yet. And he's just built this unbelievably massive physique. I mean, he is literally, he's, a, he's just, I can't explain, he's just huge. There's he's a just a video, monster. There was a video they put up and he was on hack squat. And the hack squat is like piled either side. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of these old ones just like in an old gym and it's like this metal, it's literally just like this metal 90 degree sort of thing or 40, yeah. what degree is that? I don't know. But it's every time he goes down the bottom bit there's no reinforcement on it and it's like it's shuddering 
and honestly, it's like it looks like the whole thing's going to snap. Oh every my god! Does. It's terrifying. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so you're going to be doing some training with him as well. Yes, I'm going to go down to see him, and I would love to train with both him and Corinne, mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, just get some soak up some of the knowledge mm. because I think one of the things I need is more size, mm -hmm. more density, and I can't really think of <laughs> anyone better than yeah, yeah, yeah. that's something they have nailed mm. to a team but he, so. he, he has he's on a website it's a members subscription website and he's doing very very well from it and the yeah. videos are very very well very professionally produced um yeah so like i said that video seven years ago it never got used and i remember the, the kind of poundies and the things they were doing in training it was just like he had the the hammer strength piled up the incline machine piled up with like five six yeah. plates and then they had the big chains yeah. as well and he was just ripping yeah, away with it and it, I mean he's, he's scary in the they're gym. insane but uh, but intelligent as well yeah so yeah, so we're excited to see how that progresses so I think it's going to be good with you you know you've got um, we've got Chris Bumstead yeah we've got Brion Ainsley lots of different uh, different types of people and the information they can bring mm. is very different so it's going to be There's five new columns in MD so uh, renew your subscription uh, this is the last Bodybuilder magazine. We need to support it. And I just think with these five new columns, I think it's really going to rejuvenate things. You know, obviously Flex magazine no longer being around, sadly, uh, yeah. after the next couple of months. It's going to be, um, yeah, I think it's, 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 I think it's, sometimes things come full circle, you know, I think with media. Um, and, uh, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't and wait. Hopefully I'm going to get... Um People asking more questions, and I can put that in my column as well. I've got some questions here that people cool. have sent to me. Um, one of them was after last week talking about the binge eating problem that I used to have, and someone wrote in to ask, um, how do you now combat like hunger and cravings when you're on prep? And uh, I think what you've got to do is realize what, why you feel cravings so you've got to decide is it because you're bored <laughs> is it because of like anxiety which can kind of lead with the binge eating that tends to lead you to eating or are you actually hungry so first of all you have to realize what it is that you're actually feeling and identify um so if it's just boredom obviously you've got to get busy, get, go out there, do something, read a book, listen to the podcasts and mm. this kind of thing. Just take your mind off of it. Um, if it's anxiety, anything that can release endorphins or, yeah, you read in that. <laughs> Sex sauna bath. <laughs> the sauna. Yeah. Is, that, is that multiple choice or can I have all three? All three. All three, yeah. No, yeah. because if you, <laughs> if you feel anxiety and that leads you to binge eating or, or cravings, it's because you need an endorphin rush and that's what the food gives you. So if you can find anything else that gives you, stop it. Sorry. If you can find anything else that gives you that endorphin rush, so you could have sex. I'd rather have sex than have a sauna. Or you could have a sauna or... What about sex in the sauna? No, you have to pay for that kind of thing. <laughs> or, oh, didn't I, on prep, last time on prep, I was having two baths a day. <laughs> two, yeah. And it wasn't because I was stinky. I just find it so relaxing and mm. it takes my mind off things, so I was having two hot baths a day. But the other thing as well... How many other two? What? Well, the sex... The sex was a bit... It was a bit... The saunas. The saunas. Too, my saunas. <laughs> but the, um, the other thing as well that I use for anxiety <clears throat> and stress is ashwagandha. And this is uh, an ingredient that's going to be in our first Rosie Rascal product, the Amino Spark. Mm -hmm. It's got ashwagandha in and it is good for cortisol control. I'm sure. Yeah. We'll maybe flash this up as well. Put, yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll put the text up on the screen. It's not a problem. <laughs> but I like to take uh, the ashwagandha with my mushroom complex. Um, the mushroom complex. Oh my goodness! When I first took these, is it magic? Shh, I took these two together, and it felt like like um, I was high. It yeah. was like such a focus, full of energy, but calm as well. Mm. But um, 
Also, I just wanted to mention on the Joe Rogan podcast, he does an interview with a guy called Paul Stamets, S-T-A-M-E-T-S, a mycologist, and he talks about the medicinal properties of mushrooms. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit more, that is an amazing, it's like one of the best, best podcasts I've ever listened to, this one. It's so interesting. So, yeah, and then I guess if you're hungry, you need to fill your tummy so lots of herbal teas, drinking hot teas, and I always make like a homemade lemonade. Yep. So I have my sparkling water. This is good. I put glutamine in it, a full lemon squeezed, and add stevia to sweeten, and then that keeps you full, and the lemon juice as well can help with the cravings. So, yes, super duper. I've got one more. One more question. Is um, a girl wanted to know, her quads won't grow. She feels like she's tried... Lots of different things like progressive overload. She's tried high reps, low reps, training them three times a week, once a week. What can she do to, to make them grow? Should she just keep trying to lift heavier? So with things like this, I would always try and look at some other things to stimulate growth. And usually it's down to people's uh, the function of the body mm. because they're – uh, probably not stretching enough so if you want your quads to grow you've got to make sure that your um, hip flexors are nice and loose that your hip mobility is mm -hmm. good and um, that your glutes are not too tight lower backs not too tight because every time you try and squat or do any leg press you're not actually going to be moving in the right plane of motion right. And you're not going to fire up the, the muscles. Also, if you're uh, super tight in your muscles and you're not getting the deep tissue work, mm -hmm. you may actually have problems with the nerves. Right. So they're not actually sending the correct signals down mm -hmm. the body to work certain muscles. Yeah, I found um, <clears throat> when I got sports massage and started getting it, I found it was um, like it would take less warm-up sets to get into when I was yeah. squatting. You yeah. know, um, it did definitely better better connection. Yeah, I mean it's. If people want to do bodybuilding seriously and they want to compete mm -hmm. and they're training frigging hard, you have to stretch mm -hmm. and you have to get sports massage. I always say if I was like a millionaire, the first thing I would do is have my own personal sports uh, massage yeah. person. Like I would have them every day. I would do, mm -hmm. get treatment every day. I just love it. And you like it the deeper, the better. Oh, yeah. They, they always think I'm psycho. I've, I've done bits on your show and, you're, and I'm, I'm frightened. I'm hurting you. And you're like, no, come on, Joel, stop tickling me. Yeah. You're tickling me. Get in there. And I'm like, I can't. I can't physically do it. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm, she has to pay people to do it. I too, like it. So. Getting in. It, yeah, but the thing is, the more I found the more it kind of <laughs> – the more intense, the more relief you get. Exactly. So but also one of the uh, incredible things that I started doing last year that really helped me with my um, all over body, to be honest, was doing Pilates. Mm -hmm. Because um, over the years I'd neglected the core. I did, I did similar to Cedric where I didn't train my abs because I wanted to keep the waist mm -hmm. small. But actually it had the opposite effect and made my waist bigger mm -hmm. because... There was no stability or strength mm -hmm. in the core or the pelvis, mm -hmm. which meant that then when I tried to lift heavy weights on things like deadlift, squats, mm -hmm. the, the main area that is kind of holding everything together was not strong enough to take the weight. Right. So the weight um, wouldn't go onto the legs properly. It kind of all impacted into on your the, core. Yeah. What yeah. you should say, just something just popped into my head there about Cedric. Cedric said to us yesterday that he'd... I said, you, you said, oh, have you done much training, Cedric? And he went, yeah, I've had a couple of sessions. And he said, but um, like yesterday morning, he said, I just went to the gym and I just stretched. Yes. And it kind of just flagged up on my head there because when we saw him at the airport at San Marino, uh, Bologna Airport in Italy, um, you were talking about stretching to him. Yeah. And he said then, this was last November, he said he didn't stretch. He doesn't uh -huh. hardly stretch. And it's funny because it's just oh, popped so in. he's put a little bit into it. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I just can't tell people how how important stretching is to create the best physique that you can. Dorian, Dorian Yates, I was doing some filming at his um, at Temple Gym back in, for MD, back in like 2010, 2011. And uh, Dorian was in training and obviously been retired several, like, four years by yeah. then. And um, he was doing legs that day. And obviously he was still, he's not training to bodybuild, he's just training to kind of maintain and, you know, he just yeah. likes to train. Yeah. Um, and he was on the floor for about maybe 20, 30 minutes stretching. Yeah. 
you know? And I spoke to him afterwards and he said that is one thing he wished he'd done more of when he was Mr. Olympia yeah. was um, things like stretch. And, and it's, it's funny because a many bodybuilders watching this, um, bodybuilding fans may be thinking Pilates, yoga, this is not for me. This is, I, I want to lift weights. I want to bodybuild. Mm -hmm. Well, injury prevention is one of the most important things for a bodybuilder's progression. Yeah. And now Dorian swears by yoga. Yes. Um, I think he still does a bit of weights, but he's like yoga. It's like the idea of a six-time Mr. Olympia, you know, um, doing yoga. And I, I'm thinking But it's like, so important. Yeah, things like body, Pilates. Well, what people have got to realize is the body is designed to move in many different ways. Mm. We were not designed to just go, uh, uh, or, uh. you know, there's so many different ways the body's supposed to move and it should be mobile. And not only stretching at the end of a workout, but to spend 15 minutes getting mobile before you start and make sure that you can move. It properly. activates the muscles, doesn't yeah. it? it I'll, activates I'll give you an example of what I do. Every time I train back, I always do... Uh, mobility work on my shoulders and my pecs right because if you think about trying to bring your arm back and squeeze the lat if your pec is tight and you come to here mm. it's going to make you go like this mm -hmm. and pull you in the wrong range of motion rather than down and mm -hmm. actually activating the lat so there's like opposing body parts that you should be doing mobility workouts before you train mm -hmm. very important I think you need to speak to Ronnie, our friend Ronnie Coleman, because he's had all his back surgeries and people are kind of worried about him. But I think... Um, but when we trained with Ronnie, he was stretching afterwards. He was, yeah, he was. Maybe yeah. it's something, I don't know if he's always done it, but he spent a long time stretching his legs afterwards. Well, he used to be able to do the splits, didn't he? Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, because remember he got the 2003 Olympia when he was like 290 something, 280 something. He, was, he did the splits and it's like people sometimes think these guys are very, because a lot of them are very tight and, yes. you know, it's like they need to... And I'll tell you something else as well. The way that the body and the mind are connected, if you have a tight, if you have tight muscle that is not stretched, mm. I guarantee that you get quite stressed and anxious, anxiety. Um, when you stretch your body, it is a release and it's not just a physical release, it release. You just feel amazing afterwards. 2006, um, I, this is before I started getting sports massage. I'd done four, I competed four times that year um, and I never got sports massage, I never stretched. And I remember I had to call an ambulance. Um, I had to call an ambulance one day because I thought I was having, so, I, honestly, the pain in my head was so, it was like, I was screaming from the pain. Anyway, the paramedics came and they said, actually, it's, um, it's actually called, it's called, it's called a cluster headache. And it's actually caused by tight traps. Um, and that's where, because right down the back of my traps, my shoulders, that's where all the tightness was. And it was pulling at the back of my head. And it was causing like just the most excruciating headache. Yeah. So anyway, I, but I actually had something similar where I had to go to hospital because I had like pains in my chest. I've done that. I've done and that. And I thought I was having a heart attack, and then my arm went all oh, numb and tingly. <laughs> so it. I went to hospital, and actually it was a, a pulled muscle like round the thoracic yeah. and it was the nerve damage I, I went to accident and emergency once because i was training shoulders and i must have twisted or something and the pain was there basically all i knew was having sharp <laughs> stabbing pain in my chest and i thought i was having a heart and it's funny because in a and e if you've got chest pains you take priority over if someone's got like, and there was people like were bleeding arms oh. and and these women were babies and there's me being rushed through like i'd just been training and it and as soon as i got in and they put me up on the machines I could feel it starting to loosen, and they went, no, this is muscular. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, Oops. so sorry. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, me and Rosie. Yeah, okay, well, I'm going to cut to someone now that I really, really want to see in the Olympia. Okay. Okay, so let's cut to that. <laughs> That's not the right clip. Here's the right clip.
<laughs> yeah, cl- to uh, Hadi from okay. uh, San Marino. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Hadi Shupan, why is this guy not in the Olympia? Is there anything that can be done about sorting his visa? I, I mean, it, it's Iran, he's Iranian, they won't let him in. Um, it's such a sh- isn't it such a shame that this guy will not be allowed at the Olympia because he's not allowed access visas, visas to get into America. Imagine the excitement as well. He's prepped for it as well. Oh. He prepped for the Olympia last year and then he had to go do um, Korea uh, where, you know, there was that controversy because many people thought he looked better than Flex Lewis because Flex was a little bit off. Mm. But um, the thing about Hadi is... When he did San Marino in the Open, where he took second to Cedric last year and beat Brandon Curry, you know Brandon Curry was the you know most probably most improved bodybuilder of the year. Um, he, I, I just assumed he was over two twelve at that show because he, he looked sent, he looked unbelievable. He could have beat Cedric, and it, we I contacted. Uh, Patrick, Patrick Tua, who, there, who was actually having breakfast with Dennis James. Dennis James says, no, he weighed in. He, he, he was under two. He knew, he knew for a fact that had he on stage in the Open was under 212. Mm. So with that in mind... And he put some more size. Could he even put more No, 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 no. It's not about size. It's the, the fact that he looks his best at under 212, where you've got someone like Flex Lewis. Right, who has to come down. Yeah. yeah. Flex Lewis looks his absolute best at 225. So right. he's having to really... We're not seeing the best version of Flex yes, Lewis on stage. Because you're not, you're not necessarily getting that, that real sort of... Flex could probably be tighter and grainier, couldn't he? He looked, honestly, I, I, Flex was good enough to win last year, but he was very, very flat. Right. His waist looked tiny, and I thought maybe he did that deliberately to come in to bring his waist in, you know, with all the... But this was quite, he had quite a lot of stress as well, didn't well, he? Well, yeah, yeah, we obviously knew about, you know, the whole, uh, he had a lot of stress with the Hurricane and Dallas dying and all that, so maybe that did play a factor. Yeah. But the fact is, um, you know... Flex, uh, Haddy at his best is under 212. He doesn't have to cut weight. He doesn't have to do anything. At his best, carved up, whatever. What he weighs in is 212. Flex really has to sacrifice fullness, muscle tissue even, to get into 212. And then he has to try and eat up. Now, I I can always check what he's... I've I've messaged him a few times about it. He's maybe probably... I think you don't know with dehydrating. They might you might be two ten, two twelve on stage. Yeah. But really, Flex Lewis at his best is two twenty, two twenty five. So it just seems such a shame that we can't get Haddy into the. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's like I said, maybe maybe Arnold could have a word with Trump. Maybe we can pay the Russians or something <laughs> if they can help us out. Yeah, but I mean, as you know, I mean, we blew uh, he blew our socks off, didn't he, last year at San Marino? Yeah, Haddy, incredible. absolutely phenomenal. Incredible. Okay, now I'm going to cut to another clip now. Um, this was at the Arnold Classic. I filmed it on my phone. And it's of the, because it was the 30th anniversary of the Arnold Classic. Here's all the, th- uh, the winners from the very first Arnold Classic, which Rich Gaspari won in 1989. Oh. So let's cut to that and uh, see who you can spot. And wait till you see Dexter come out. Um, that is priceless. Check this out. Yes! 2002, 2003, and 2004... Jay Cutler. Two thousand five, two thousand six, two thousand eight, two thousand thirteen, and two thousand fifteen, the blade, Dexter Jackson. <laughs> Which is two thousand seven, Victor Martinez. <laughs> 2009, 2010, 2016, Kai Green. 2011, 2012, Branch Warren. 2014, Dennis Wolf. 2017, Cedric McMillan. 
So what do you think of that? Oh Very cool. I love all the... I used to love watching all the old videos of the um, posing routines of uh, Barry DeMay. Oh, amazing. I, I love all that. And I love the intensity. Like, I don't think that bodybuilders have got the same, like, intensity on stage anymore. The posing, shocking. Like, um... Oh, God, what's his name? Gus Gasparri. Mm, um, yes. Um, Barry DeMay. When they were on stage, it was like life or death. It was like, do you know? It was more artistic, uh, wasn't it? It's like I was saying about um, going back to Kamal earlier on. He hits a lot of poses in his routines that are very reminiscent of Mohammed Makawe, who came second at the Olympia in 1984. Um, you know, this was a guy that was competing in his like 170s, 170, 180, who was, but this guy, you know, the really artistic, creative posing, the real, the real flair, and the, almost like they're in it, like they're playing yeah, a character. Like a trance. It's like yeah, they're, yeah. they're just so into it. I, yeah, it's really incredible to watch that. Kevin Navrone, Vince Taylor, these were the kind of the real, the yeah, leaders. They were yeah. the Lila Brada. I mean, you can't, you cannot get better posing that. Yeah. And I think it's an art that is sadly lost nowadays. Yes. Uh, I think Cedric is one that does actually do pretty good routines, but um, uh, yeah, so I just think it's a bit of a bit of a shame. And then when when you're kind of getting people who do dance routines on stage, you're getting best poser award, it does stick in my throat a little bit. It mm. does annoy me a little mm. bit. Because it's not really focusing on the mm. body yeah. as much. Yeah. Okay. And also talking about um, Arnold, remember in episode three, I uh, referred to a guy that won the classic at the Two Bros Pro London Pro, Royal London Pro, a guy yeah. called Wesley Vissers. Yeah. Now he won the classic and he got his pro card. And I referred to uh, a post he put on Instagram where he actually poses backstage. And it's, it gave me, it, watch this, it'll give you shivers. Okay. Let's check this out. I just, do you know, I just love the, I, I love even like the short, the funny pants as well. Not, he didn't have. Oh, no, I don't like those. Yeah, I no. do. I just, do you know, I even love the old bikinis the women used to wear, like the thick, thicker pants and Not stuff. Like thongs. Yeah, I really just love the whole look. And I like the way that the bodies look. Um, just not so forced. Mm. I really like the sort of a little bit smoother mm -hmm. look. Okay. 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 <laughs> um, also, I've got to plug episode 10 of the Tiger Rascal Show because I've got enough footage now to put it together. So that's I'm going to put that together this week. Um, again, it's going to be a fight to try and squeeze everything in, but it's going to have footage from your poser routine from the Two Bros Pro. It's going to have uh, snippets from my Arnold interviews, like with Lee Priest, that is up to, what, 65,000 views now. Check that out on, uh, on MD. Um, and also, uh, oh, we have some Cedric. Yes. Fun and games with Cedric at the, uh, Mount, the shop yesterday. Mount Cedric. <laughs> yeah, Mount Cedric. Yeah, keen mountaineer. And uh, also, yeah, I'm going to pop in your your Vogue Italia. Okay. Yeah, the the, the shoot. Uh, we'll explain more in the Tiger Rascal. We can talk about it more of that next week because I think we've got to wrap up now. Um, and also, I'll do a review for because I've not actually seen Justice League yet. But we need to finish Peaky Blinders, don't we? We'll finish Peaky Blinders oh, and then we can watch Justice League. Yeah. I'm actually going to be gutted. I'm going to be like when Breaking Bad finished. I know, it's like really become part of us, hasn't it? Yeah, big time. Uh, if you've never seen Peaky Blinders, check it out. It's a box set. There's four seasons, six episodes per season. 
uh, about uh, uh, Br Br Birmingham gangsters in the 1920s. It's absolutely sensational. Stark studied cast. Tom By Hardy, order of that Peaky baby. Blinders, <laughs> Cillian Murphy. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. You will not be disappointed. Giles and Rosie approved. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously, pretty soon, we've got Avengers coming out of Infinity War. Are you yeah. going to come to see that? If I have to. Come on, Spider-Man, Black Panther, Captain America. Come and watch it. Okay, keep me out of mischief. Keep him happy. Okay, and I think we should end off with uh, our friend Luke Sando because yes. um, Rahul Mago was kind enough to send me uh, footage of his posing routine. So I think we'll end off with that. Awesome. Um, there's a few subjects which we've not even managed to tap on, but uh, also want to wish Arnold all the best as well. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure he's get, watching. Get I'm sure he's soon. watching this. I mean, I heard he's a big fan <laughs> of the show. <laughs> I mean, he does. He, I mean, he was saying just the. Other, I mean, he never misses an episode. Does he? <laughs> In fact, let's cut to a clip because I've got footage on my phone where Arnold was sat a few seats away from me at the Arnold at the Arnold at the Arnold, and he was going absolute. Watch his reaction when the strongmen were coming on stage. Check this out. This is so fun to see to see Arnold's passion still still scope. Check this out. Okay, well, um, that's it. Yeah, that was a good episode. I think we've been talking for about five hours again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we need to go for Nando's. And... We don't speak to each other for the rest of the week. <laughs> yeah, just, just don't even acknowledge each other. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay, well, uh, singing this out today is Luke Sando with his. Uh... <laughs> Posing to Mariah Carey. No, he's not. No. He's not. I thought he's posing to. Um, yeah, so see you next week. And um, that's all, folks. That's all, folks. Okay.